Sam Fingers. Help me. You'd better have a good reason for all this rumpus. You lied to us, Mr. Fingers. You lied. You've been in us for years. Left us. But now I'll make sure you're never allowed to leave us again. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, where, after six years, the online video nightmare is back. Salad fingers. Early in Film Theory's life, I tried my best to interpret the series in all of its rust-coated, ink-baby-filled storytelling, and I think I did a pretty darn good job. After piecing together fragmented toilet conversations and 40s-era pop culture references, we were able to diagnose Salad Fingers' dissociative identity disorder, his connection to the Great War of World War One and the series' overall themes of childhood trauma and struggling to belong. So, how does episode 11, Glass Brother, fit into all this after six years of hiatus? Does it upend everything that we thought we knew about the series? Surprisingly, no. For as bizarre as this episode is, <laughs> and boy, does it get weird. <laughs> I gotta say it feels like the most straightforward one that we've had to date, one that actually aligns with my earlier analysis pretty darn well. That being said, it is worth mentioning that you might want to catch up on the previous two-part theory right here. Give them a rewatch if it's been a while, <laughs> and that's not me just trying to get extra views out of those videos, I actually had to go back and watch them myself to remember what the heck I said because this series is just that deep and complex, but rewarding if you're willing to dive into all its creepy details. So now, with that look back out of the way, it's time to look ahead, ahead to chapter 11, to uncover whatever mysteries may be held within those leafy green fingers. In episode 11, Salad Finger starts off playing with his happy finger puppet friends, just another delicious salady day of gnawing on him for punishment or throwing him in the dirt. Salad then chooses to focus in on Hubert Cumberdale. After holding a mirror up to Hubert and the reflection telling him that it'll never be a real boy, Salad takes it upon himself to help this puppet friend grow up a little, recreating that classic scene in Pinocchio where Geppetto sews sticky flesh chunks onto his puppet from the dead skin collection in his junk drawer. It's a tale as old as time. This turns Hubert into a real life flesh boy who's so happy he I just want to dunk on the rooftops for all to see. Salad loves this new and improved Hubert Cumberdale like a son, romping around their World War One era wasteland. Well, <laughs> that is until Salad starts getting harassed by two people who show up in his mirror, his mother and an evil mirror version of himself, the Glass Brother from the episode's title. A lot of verbal abuse and one nasty porridge later, Glass Brother steals Hubert Fleshboy Cumberdale, spurring Salad to travel into the mirror world and rescue him. In the end, Salad smashes his mirror, licks up the pieces, and lives happily ever after with Fleshboy. See? Like I said, perfectly obvious what's going on here, right? Right? Okay, so maybe not. In typical Salad Finger style, even with some kind of comprehensible storyline, there is still a lot of weirdness to unpack in order to understand what this episode means, rather than just simply understanding the actions that are happening on the surface level. Now, in my previous theories on the franchise, I speculated that Hubert Cumberdale may be the representation of Salad Fingers himself. They share the same birthday, the same weird hat, Hubert has powers, the other puppets don't, and they both seem to be mistreated at the hands of their family. In short, the two appear to be linked directly to each other in a way that Salad doesn't share with other characters in the story. And this Hubert-Salad connection may actually be officially confirmed in the opening moments of Part 11 via a subtle clue that's very easy to overlook. In the scene where Salad holds up a mirror to Hubert, where we would expect to see the puppet's face reflected back at him, we instead see Salad's own face. It's an odd little detail, especially when you consider that David Firth, the series creator, explicitly chooses to show that the mirror adheres to real-world rules, as throughout the surrounding scenes, we see the mirror accurately reflecting other things, like the freshly haircutted Marjorie Stewart Baxter. This feels like an intentional creative decision to subtly allude to the fact that Hubert and Salad are indeed one and the same, or at the very least, reflections of one another. The next scene shows Salad turning Hubert into a real boy using spare flesh. Now, if you notice, this drawer contains memorabilia from past episodes. The pump from when Salad Fingers was recovering after giving birth in episode 9 letter, a bone that I actually have no idea what it is, it 
kind of looks like a very small hip bone to me. And the broken name tag of Milford Cubicle. Real name Harry, the guy in the barbecue apron who, in episode 3, died banging his head against the door and was later skinned to make Salad's friendship hat in episode 10. It's that reference and the fact that he's the only character that we've ever seen get skinned in this series that makes me think that this box is filled with his spare flesh and that the flesh being sewn onto Hubert is his. But let's talk about this idea of Hubert becoming a real boy for a second, shall we? Throughout the series, we've seen Salad's personality and, well, he's not your typical man's man. I mean, he's not your typical anything, really, but he's definitely not what you would call masculine. We see him giving birth, wearing bride's dresses, flirting with sailors, milking himself, and doing a fair bit of crying. For someone whose brother was a soldier in the Great War, this sort of behavior could have been seen as dishonorable, embarrassing, especially when you consider that this is back in the 40s. Salad most likely got harassed for all these reasons. So Hubert, wrapping himself up in the flesh of someone else, a male character, is truly a rebirth of sorts. You can hear it in the nursery-style musical chimes in the background, the way Salad heaps compliments onto him like you would a newborn baby. Who's that little dazzling dreamboat? Sugar cheeks? Thunder thighs? And the way Hubert speaks reflects this too. He's a new carefree person who's just been born. I'm fresh. And if it's a rebirth for Hubert, then we already know that it's also representative of a rebirth for Salad Fingers himself. He's finally able to give rise to something in his life that's able to do what he always struggled with, fit in as a real boy. Emphasis on boy. Not quite convinced? Let's watch what happens next. Salad immediately starts speaking about the real boy Hubert like his own baby, specifically mentioning how lucky he is to have Hubert in his life. I've surely been blessed by the soft hand of our great provider. So this is all great. Salad has himself a new fleshy baby who's also kind of a stand-in for himself starting over, but then everything starts to go sideways when Salad encounters Glass Brother, his reflection in the mirror and the title character of the episode. Well, this is the first place that we really notice his appearance, it's not the first time that we've seen him. Remember in that opening when Hubert looked into the mirror and he saw Salad in his reflection? Well, this obviously isn't a reflection of Hubert, but it's also not really a reflection of Salad either. This is the actual first appearance of Glass Brother, and it's immediately clear that his defining characteristic is that he's pretty darn nasty, going on to insult Salad Fingers in pretty much every way possible. Khaki Spider Fingers, you'll never be a real boy, Andrew Hans. Why is Glass Brother so mean? So who or what is Glass Brother? Is he Salad's brother? Salad's reflection? What is really going on with his character? Well, the answer is that he's a little bit of both, in the sense that Glass Brother is the voice inside Salad's head telling him that he's stupid, telling him that he'll never amount to anything. Basically, throughout this episode, you can think of Glass Brother as being that nagging sense of self-doubt and self-loathing that we all have from time to time. Except in this case, that self-doubt is what Salad sees every time he looks at a reflective surface. He's a reflection of Salad, yes, but more accurately, he's a reflection of what Salad has been told is wrong with him for his entire life. You'll never be a real boy. Which again, goes back to the idea of Salad being the boy who struggled to fit in. But through Hubert growing up and becoming a real life flesh boy, we see a Salad Fingers with newfound confidence. He's a proud parent now, which is giving him purpose and strength. You notice how in this scene when Salad first starts talking to Glass Brother, he immediately recognizes that this is not himself. This is not his own reflection. He tells him that he wouldn't understand his love for baby Hubert, because you're just a glass brother. He's dismissing that hateful voice in his own head, but as soon as he establishes that there is indeed a difference between them, a new challenger enters the ring. The source of all that hate from the get-go, Glass Mother. And you know that when someone's mom symbolically shows up in a mirror, we're gonna be getting into some deep psychological issues. Now, we know from previous episodes that Salad Fingers had what you might call a rough upbringing. By every indication we have from previous episodes, his mother was either abusive, neglectful, or both. She's the hateful voice speaking to him over the radio. She's the persona who Salad switches into when throwing Hubert into the muck. I'll have no dirty immigrants in my house. 
And now, she's the one reminding him, You're a stupid boy. Yes, mother. Notice that when we see Salad respond that yes, he is stupid, we're not actually seeing Salad respond. We're seeing Glass Brother respond. This is an important distinction because it gives us a big clue as to what Glass Brother is. The fact that we see Glass Brother responding, but only see the back of Salad's head, further confirms that Glass Brother is the version of Salad Fingers who agrees with his mother. He's the one who does see Salad as stupid, as useless, as ugly. Again, Glass Brother is Salad's inner negative monologue, reinforcing his self-hatred and the abuse that's been heaped on him by his family. When she asks him to fetch a bowl of porridge in her next line, notice that Salad says, Yes, Glass Mother. Yes, Glass Mother. This is an important distinction because it's the real Salad talking from outside the mirror, recognizing that this is Glass Mother. Whereas when Glass Brother is talking, he just refers to her as Mother. Pass Mother the porridge. Because they're on the same side, both physically and mentally. From there, the two of them keep verbally abusing Salad, calling him a weak little squirt and weakly bones. Then, interestingly, the tables turn. We see the world from Glass Brother's side, and Glass Mother says, You'll forever just be a lonely reflection. We then hear Salad say, It's not fair. I've been in here for too long. These lines give us the impression that Salad is the one trapped in the mirror world. But again, this is just cluing us into the perception that Salad has of himself. He's not really in some weird alternate dimension. Probably, I mean, the series is weird. But the more likely explanation is that Salad feels trapped by all the negative self-talk that he's constantly experiencing from Glass Brother and Mother. He feels like a prisoner in his own mind and his own life. And as Glass Brother tells him, Those khaki spider feet fingers aren't going anywhere. Except this time, it's different. This time, Salad has the new and improved Hubert Cumberdale real boy, aka the new reborn version of himself, to pick him up, who has a new chance at life, because instead of being put down, he's now being loved and positively reinforced by Salad, his parental figure, who, you know, is also sort of himself. You get it. Over the following scenes, we just get more strong indicators that Glass Mother is responsible for a lot of Salad Fingers' problems, including potentially poisoning him intentionally. But, but Glass Mother... You'll eat what I tell you to. Don't make me come through that mirror and poke out your eyes. Later, the real boy comes in and takes care of him, showing the stark difference between Salad's relationship with Glass Mother and his relationship with the real boy. But the two of them being together attracts the unwanted attention of Glass Brother. When Salad talks about how Hubert is his... He's my real life flesh boy. The most beautiful boy in the world. It inspires Glass Brother to steal away Salad's new beginning by snatching Hubert through the mirror, where Glass Mother starts straight away to turn him into another Salad fingers. Stick him in the call shot. Again, all of this is symbolic of Salad's inability to escape his mother's negative reinforcement and abuse, and how every attempt he's made at a new beginning for himself is stolen away by the faces who haunt him in the mirror. But instead of ending it on that note, honestly, like you'd kind of expect an episode of Salad Fingers to end, we get a big rescue scene instead. Huzzah! Salad sneaks into the glass world late at night through a puddle, and I gotta say, I love this detail here. He's able to drop through the water now at night and there's no reflection. Whereas earlier in the day, he did have a reflection because the sun was out. He had to deal with himself face to face. He had to once again confront his reflection. Once he's in the mirror world, he grabs Hubert and confronts Glass Brother. I don't think you ought to have stolen my little flesh boy. This is a huge turning point for the character because it's clearly the first time Salad has stood up to this negative negative self-talk that he's been trapped with most of his life. As soon as it happens, we see the real ugliness of Glass Brother truly come out in full force, where we see his teeth turning to nails, symbolically representing how harmful his words have been all along. And then he and Glass Mother start vibrating, like they're glitching out in the Matrix, suddenly destabilized because Salad has upended their game. He's standing up for himself. Finally, the mirror shatters, symbolically breaking Salad Fingers out of that world of negative self-talk. Salad takes action action and breaks a final mirror into tiny pieces that are too small for any of the characters to climb through. Even though Glass Mother's voice multiplies because there's now tons of mirror shards, she's powerless because Salad stood up for himself. He smashes her insults up until they're too small to hear anymore. It's really uplifting, right? And then, because we couldn't just have a nice ending without some more fleshy goop sounds, Salad rubs Hubert into the glass shards in a nice way?
way, and then he licks them off like a mama cat. It's one of those moments that feels like it's weird just to be weird, but based on this idea that Salad is breaking away from the negative cycles of his past, my interpretation is that it's him acknowledging that yes, he is a product of his upbringing, but it doesn't have to swallow him up. Instead, he wipes clean the broken shards of his past, internalizes them, but remains his own grown-up real boy. And this interpretation is reinforced by the final shot of the episode, where we see that one small shard of glass has survived, big enough for Salad to see Glass Mother in, still cursing the dickens out of him. And this is actually my favorite moment in this whole episode, because in its own bizarre, salad fingersy way, it's pretty relatable. Salad can't ever completely get rid of Glass Mother. The impact she had on him will always be there in some small way, just like we can never 100% get rid of our own negative self-talk, or the negativity that we receive from other people. There's always gonna be that one little shard left. But the cool thing about this moment is that Salad Fingers shows that he's okay. And yes, it's definitely a little weird that he uses the shard to cut open his finger and smear it with blood, but what this represents is that these feelings, that Glass Mother will always be a part of him. And yeah, she's wounded him, but he goes on to take the shard and put it away. The shard is still there, it still exists, but he closed it in a box and moved past it. And now he can finally heal and move on. A happy Salad Fingers ending. Would you look at that? So do Hubert and Salad just ride off into their fleshy little sunset? Is Salad free? Well, on one hand, I'd like to say, yeah, he's finally done it. On the other hand, though, listen to Glass Mother's final line. Love your arms for cricket stumps. Just wait until your father gets where she gets cut off mid-sentence when she's saying, wait until your father gets home. Now, I may have missed it somewhere along the line, but I don't really think that we've dealt with all of Salad's daddy issues yet, which seems especially relevant now that he's got a kid of his own. So in future episodes, I would expect to see a newly confident Salad Fingers coming fresh off of defeating his glass mother, now having to confront some kind of appearance, symbolic appearance, corpse appearance, or finger puppet equivalent of his father coming around, so we can finally deal with whatever he might have in store for our little green friend. Am I right about this? I would genuinely love to know if this is what David Firth intended. If so, awesome. It's a ton of fun to analyze. It's one of my favorite series, actually, that we cover on Film Theory. And oh yeah, I get that special privilege of listening to all those gooey flesh boy sounds at uncomfortably high volumes and headphones over and over and over again. But hey, if not and I'm wrong, well, heck, it was still fun. See you in another six years for episode 12. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory and cut.